A3T condensed. Let's go back, not too far this time, to 1988. Airbus eyed the success of the dominant Boeing 747 and wanted to compete with something bigger, more modern and more efficient. So they glued together two of their largest aircraft, the A340, first side by side, but this design had problems with aerodynamics, weight and evacuation times. Scrap that, they stacked one above the other and this resulted in a full double-decker wide body plane with basement for cargo which checked two of the main problems with the previous design. You get the tallest plane, but it's still too heavy and wide. The plane is designed in an 80 meter box imposed by the ICAO, so they tweak the wing's aspect ratio to 7.8, sacrificing some fuel efficiency in the process. They cut the ends and added winglets to reduce weight turbulence and induce drag. The aircraft is still too heavy. Extensive use of composite materials are to reduce weight while maintaining structural integrity, for example, glare. Combining the stiffness of aluminum and strength of fiberglass to create a skin that is lighter, more corrosion and explosion resistant. The plane is fitted with four modern turbofan engines with reduced noise and fuel burn, providing the plane with enough thrust and range. It was marketed towards long-haul high-demand routes, the trunk routes of hub and spoke model of aviation. There are six airlines which place the most orders, and they coincidentally own major airport hubs. The A380 directly competes with the 747. It has a 50% increase in seating capacity, 45% increase in floor area, allowing customers to come up with more ambitious interiors to fill up the space. But of course, we all know the extra space is dedicated for first and business class amenities like a bar, shower, suites, and residence apartments. Economy class remains relatively unchanged, with the usual 343 on the lower deck, 242 on level 2, and seats being an astonishing 1.5 inches wider. Parts were produced all over Europe and transported by truck convoys and barges to the final assembly line in Toulouse, France. The A380 was unveiled to the world on 18th January 2005. Tolerances were tight and putting the airplane together was a logistical nightmare due to wrong specifications and problematic wiring. Delay after delay after delay caused FedEx and United Parcel to say screw this and cancel their A380 freighter orders. Expected deliveries by 2009 dropped from 120 to 90 to 70 to 45, then only actually delivering wow. 23. And the A380 finally flew its first commercial flight with Singapore Airlines on 25th October 2007. As of 2018, they have 331 firm orders and delivered 223. Over the years, airlines were satisfied with the efficiency and reliability of the aircraft and passengers praise its comfort. The A380 beats the Boeing 747 in almost every aspect, but the 20-year-long program, from its conception to 2018, Airbus will never break even with this project. Airports had to undergo upgrading works to accommodate the A380's monstrous size. Larger passenger holding rooms, upgraded aero bridges, widened runways, specialized servicing equipment and vehicles, which many of smaller airports could not afford, limiting the destinations the A380 could reach. Large passenger seating capacities means the A380 could only be put on high demand routes to ensure all seats are filled and profits maximized but smaller planes are guaranteed to fill seats. The preference of the point-to-point -point model as opposed to the hub-and-spoke model made airlines prefer long-haul low-demand routes, which bypasses a hub airport and reduces traveling times for passengers. The repurposing of older mid-size mid-range planes to suit the model outcompetes the A380 due to their lower operating costs, and new planes are more fuel efficient. Airlines would rather have two to three smaller aircraft run to the same destination many times a day rather than consolidate passengers into one A380, offering higher frequencies to suit business traveler schedules and different prices for less desirable times, covering a larger market segment. Sure, the A380 was an engineering marvel, but sometimes bigger doesn't mean better. Emirates said they won't place new orders unless Airbus makes a refreshed version, and the program is still at a net loss with Airbus cutting production to less than 10 planes a year. Budget airlines have expressed interest to purchase second-hand A380s and convert them to all economic configuration for long-haul budget routes in the future, but for now, it remains as a status symbol.